per mile in many areas. This could impact your commute and any flights. So we'll have those details. Good morning, everyone. I'm Chris Groh in for Eric Connor. And I'm Nettie Irampour. Glad to have you with us. Of course, we'll tell you all about the forecast, foggy conditions, and the warm weather that's on its way. But first, we want to get right to our top story here. In just a couple of hours, county supervisors expected to call for the immediate resignation of Supervisor Nathan Fletcher. A resolution of no confidence in Fletcher will be presented during a special meeting in San Diegans are encouraged to attend. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol joining us live downtown now to explain what this vote could really do. Dana Marie, good morning. Well, good morning, Chris and Netta. This resolution that they're going to vote on today pretty much declares a statement that he should quit right now. If it passes, they legally, as a board, cannot remove Supervisor Nathan Fletcher before his resignation date of May 15th. Nora Vargas just is really hoping that this comes as a powerful statement to him. I think people understand that for us, uh, doing a vote of no confidence and ensuring that um, that Supervisor Fletcher resigns immediately is an important step for us to be able to move forward. This call to step down comes just a couple weeks after Supervisor Nathan Fletcher first announced he was checking himself into a treatment center for PTSD, childhood trauma and alcohol abuse. In the days following, he announced his pending resignation, admitting to an affair with a former MTS employee who is now suing him for alleged sexual harassment and assault. Now, again, it's important to note that this resolution would not ensure that Fletcher would step down any sooner. Supervisor Jim Desmond was actually the first to publicly call for Fletcher's resignation, pointing out he is still drawing from his nearly $200,000 annual salary during this time, saying he could still technically call in a vote or show up at a meeting until May 15th. Now, in calling for Fletcher to step down, instead of waiting for another month, Board Chair Nora Vargas says there's just too much work to be done for the 675,000 San Diegans in District 4, which Fletcher still technically represents. She also stressed that all San Diegans have the right to voice their opinion on this issue to the board today at a meeting at 9 a.m. here at the county administration building. The room is 310. Again, if you'd like to attend, it's open to the public, 310 at 9 a.m. If you can't, of course, CBS 8, we have you covered. We'll be bringing you the latest details on further editions of CBS 8 News. I'm Dana Marie McNichol coming to you live from downtown San Diego. Thank you so much, Dana Marie. And continuing coverage this morning, a plastic surgeon who practices in Benita has... Um, I'll take over from here. I think we've had some microphone issues, but uh, back to this uh, court case here. Dr. Chacon accused of illegally operating on Megan Espinoza. Her picture seen right there. This was in 2018. They said he was doing this under, quote, conscious sedation. At the same time, he's accused of using a registered nurse who was not authorized to administer anesthesia. During surgery, Espinoza went into cardiac arrest. According to an arrest warrant in this case, Dr. Chacon waited three hours to call 911, though his attorneys say he did try to revive her. Instead of doing the necessary thing to save the victim's life and to call 911, the defendant essentially doubled down on his uh, practices and prevented other people from, from calling 911. Dr. Chacon is charged now with second degree murder and faces 15 years to life if convicted. Your SDG&E bill could soon change based on how much money you make. It's the result of a state law passed last year to try and help stabilize rates and make billing more equitable. Some customers will end up saving money. Others, though, will pay more. CBS 8's Shannon Handy spoke with SDG&E's Vice President of External Affairs and Operations Support to see how this all works and to see how the changes could impact you. Go to CBS8.com, click on the link to this story. This morning, we are now learning new details about the five-year-old girl who was shot and killed. She was riding in her parents' car on a highway in Fremont in the Bay Area. You see her pictures here. This is Eliana Chrysotomo. She was less than two weeks away from her sixth birthday when somebody shot a bullet into that car 
and it struck, struck her. Her family desperate for help right now. They flagged down a CHP officer on the side of the highway. Unfortunately, she did not survive that shooting. This morning, CHP does not have a description of the car or any idea who the shooter might be. And this morning, the San Diego County Humane Society is over capacity and needs your help freeing up space and they're willing to pay you. The shelter is now offering a $100 gift card for fostering a large dog. Any volunteer who watches a dog weighing 50 pounds or more for at least two weeks will be given a gift card. There are 50 available. Volunteers must attend a two hour training session and can sign up online. And speaking of dogs, it is National Pet Day, and we are celebrating the animals we love. I know that guy. Here's some photos of pets belonging to our CBSA team, and we're going to be showing your photos throughout this newscast. And remember, you can always send photos to us through the CBS 8 app. Just go to the Near Me section on the bottom and then hit that Share With Us button. And uh, wow. very beautiful uh, animals there. I believe yeah. they were all dogs, but I don't want to assume. But uh, I saw uh, a couple also, cats in there. Yeah. Maybe a Luna. Was that a Luna? Maybe. But uh, <laughs> I do know that it was beautiful weather in yes. all of those pictures. Now, that is for sure. Some gorgeous photos. Yeah. These dogs know how to live the oh. life. They're very well taken yeah. care of. Way to go, CBS 18. <laughs> <laughs> Some really happy pets that we all have, and we're lucky to have them, right? Uh, I will say this morning, your dogs or cats may wonder, like, why does it look like this outside? It's hard to see through the fog at this hour, but the sun will be out later if you, if you live in inland locations, and that's when you can take your dog out for that nice walk. And uh, obviously, you can walk through the fog. Just know that's what's happening. There's a little mist in the air, too. Not the best for the hair. Uh, some of the dog breeds get a little curlier, too, just like my hair does. Looking at this dense fog advisory, it'll expire at 9 a.m. Visibility is down to less than a quarter mile, so hazardous driving conditions. Whoa, Ramona, you just dropped a zero visibility, so please be careful there. O time Mesa down to a half mile still, so it's been pretty low all morning. Fallbrook, same thing. Downtown San Diego, three mile visibility, so you might see cars in front of you just fine in some spots, but then all of a sudden that patchy, dense fog just kind of hits you. So just know that that's the story of the morning. We're going to see a lot of that through about 9 a.m. Along the coast, the marine layer will likely stick around. So right now you're in the 50s and you're only going to get to the 60s, low 60s at that. 66 downtown, 78 in Ramona, 73 in Julian, 98 degrees for places like Borrego Springs. Our deserts today, yeah, looking pretty nice. Uh, we will uh, also get a check of traffic here. Let me show you what's going on with that. Um, as far as the roads are concerned right now, it does not look like we have too many major incidents, but there is this crash that popped up on the 8th. So let me go over to our traffic maps and uh, zoom into that to give you kind of the latest details on what is happening here in the Harbison Canyon area. So it looks like it's the 8 going eastbound at Lake Jennings Park Road. That's the only crash I see right now in our traffic map, so hopefully it doesn't slow you down too much. Chris. Oh, and also here's a look at the border wait times. I apologize. Uh, this is actually coming from Customs and Border Protection. So the San Ysidro Port of Entry for people going from TJ into San Diego, it'll take 115 minutes, even in the 6 a.m. hour. That's the general line. And then a lot of people like to go to Otay to try to beat the traffic. Well, that still takes you 90 minutes to enter from Otay Mesa's Port of Entry. All right. A lot of people on the roads even at this hour. Thank you so much, Nadine.